so inside the box here, it looks like we got our sensitivity kit and uh, the three screws I just took out of the back here with the included screwdriver. And we also did get a pair of batteries that come along with this thing. Put the batteries in, you do have to take the three screws out, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, whatever, hopefully they'll last a long time. Let's pop this thing open. Okay, to set the sensor up with uh, pairing mode, we'll chuck the batteries in here and then we'll uh, flip it over in Hubitat. So we'll install the batteries. To do that, we're going to go to Devices, Add Device, and it is a Zigbee, and start Zigbee pairing. And we'll see if it pops up just initially or if I do have to run a reset on it. I do have a flashing, I don't know if you can see it here. There is a flashing blue, oh there we go. We got an LED. Perfect. Hubitat picked it up right away. So we'll just call this uh, water tank sensor. And click on next. The room, this is going to be my utility room. And over to next. And that's it. The sensor is now installed. We're also going to set this thing up with an alert. So to do that, we will go to apps. And we're going to go to rule machine. Create a new rule. And we'll call this water, water in the basement. Easy enough to remember, it's the goal of this trigger. Uh, the trigger we are going to pick is water sensor. Click on the water tech sensor, hit update, and water, water reports wet. Done with the trigger, and that's the only trigger we need. I might have to change that actually, let's see what's uh, all available. Changed is better, because that way it'll run for wet and dry. Done. Add actions to run here, create conditions. Water sensor is wet. Is a condition. Add actions to run, create a new action. So conditional action. If water tank sensor is wet, then we want to send a message. We'll call it that, sure. And we're going to send that to push over and done with the action and end the if and see if it works just like that because it does look for the wet condition and hit done okay done and there's our water tank in the basement and I didn't click install rule so we'll just go update rule run actions and we'll click on done and that should be it for the habitat portion of this. So next thing we gotta do is uh, we're just gonna put the cover back on the back of this thing, because right now it is in two pieces. And uh, it did include the high sensitivity probes in uh, as part of the kit, which are these two pieces here that we just screw on as we're closing the cover back up. I'm gonna try it with them on, uh, just because it really doesn't take a whole lot of water to get between, I think the contacts are about like a 16th inch apart. I don't know if you can see that there after they're mounted. So it should be pretty sensitive and that is the goal. There should never, should never be water there unless that tank blows up in which case I want to know about it. All right, so we got this thing assembled back up and you can see on the back, that's kind of how the sensitivity nodes work. Puts those that gap like super, super close. So it should be detecting just any little bit of water. This thing does two things. Uh, it's supposed to audibly alert you and because it's hooked up to my smart hub, it should also give me an alert on the phone. So I'll put it where I want it to be, show you why I want it there, and uh, we'll test it out. All right, so I've got this in my bathroom just because I don't want to make the concrete floor wet and uh, just so we can test it out. So I'll get some water and let's see what it does. Okay, so that works. See if I got the alert on the phone. Now that definitely worked, but I did not get an alert on the phone, so uh, I'll take a look. All right, I found the problem in short order, and it was just because my notifications and the phone is in, do not disturb. So this is something I definitely wanted to push. 
uh, anyway, even if my phone is in Do Not Disturb, because this is uh, clearly an emergency situation. So I'll do that, I'll save it, and uh, I'll try it again. All right, let's try that out. And there's my notification. Alrighty, it looks like we're all set. That uh, notification is uh, dinging on the phone. So I just have uh, that sensor to place and this job is done. So if it wasn't clear in the video how much uh, water I needed to trip the sensor, there just needed to be enough water to touch both uh, probes on that gap. So as soon as water was touching both of those sensors uh, together, bridging that gap, that's when it uh, set the alarm off. I'm gonna be putting this thing in the utility room right underneath the hot water uh, emergency spiller or spillover or blow off valve and right close to the drain. This way it's going to give me two uh, different types of alerts, either for a sewage backup or for a hot water tank that decides to uh, go south on me. Almost forgot to mention if you don't have the pushover app installed on your Hubitat, uh, the video on the side here will uh, show you how to do that.